Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to compile a custom Marlin firmware for your SKR Mini. So last week uh, I did a video on swapping out the main boards to the SKR Mini E3 V2 and we just went with the default firmware. So today I'm going to show you how to actually make changes to that firmware, uh, save it to the SD card and then send it over to the board. Uh, the process isn't really that difficult at all. There's a couple things you're going to have to install, um, but I'll walk you through the whole process and then we'll get everything going. Going. If you have any questions during the process, uh, you can leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so we're here at the computer. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is download VS Code. So I just opened up a Google search and search for VS Code. Then we'll go ahead and go here and download it. Uh, we just want to download for Windows, assuming you're using Windows. And I will link to this in the description below so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but here's our installer. So we want to go ahead and open that and just walk through the install. It's going to be just a generic install, uh, nothing really changing out of the defaults. All right, guys, now that we got VS Code installed, uh, as you can see, that was a pretty easy install. You're just walking through and clicking next the entire time. Uh, we have to install one extension, which is Platform IO. So in VS Code, we'll go down to the extensions area and search for Platform IO. Um, then it's going to be this top guy here. And then we're just going to click on Install. And it's going to run through installing everything it needs, and it'll let you know when it's ready. All right, so once that's done, we can actually start uh, modifying the uh, firmware. I've got so, the main GitHub page up for um, the SKR Mini. We're going to go ahead and download all the firmware. So I'll link to this in the description below. You just go to this page. You'll click on code here and go to download zip. Then that's going to download everything we need. So I want to make a note here that this is the version provided by um, Big Tree Tech. Uh, it already has a lot of modifications in there for the SKR Mini. Now, if you wanted to just go get the latest build from Marlin, you're going to have to make a lot of tweaks in the configuration.h file. Um, I was thinking about doing a video going over that. Uh, if you guys are interested, leave a comment below and let me know. I can go through that process as well. But for the sake of this video, uh, I wanted to uh, get this out um, based on the SKR Mini because we did the board install last week. And I know that some people wanted to know how to actually do the firmware change, um, at least for the custom compile. Uh, swapping out the standard firmware was pretty simple. It's all under the firmware package here. You would just download the firmware that you wanted and uh, save it to the SD card and then enter it in the printer. But if you want to make any changes outside of what's in there, um, you have to uh, download the entire repository and then we'll load it into VS Code and then we'll go through and make our changes. Uh, this is for things like if you need to adjust your uh, BL Touch offsets or if you need to set anything to invert it for any of your stepper motors or anything like that or if you're just adding additional features or making tweaks, um, this is gonna be what you would wanna do. All right, so now that we have that downloaded, we'll go ahead and show it in folder. Uh, what we need to do is extract all. All right, now that that's extracted, it opened up another Explorer window uh, with everything we need. Uh, we're done with the browser, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. All right, but we're going to want to drill into this and we want to go to firmware and then version 2.0. Uh, the same thing would apply if you're running the 1.0 or 1.2 cards. It'll just be a um, different firmware package, but it, the same process would apply. So if you're running a different version, just go ahead and go to the version that you have. Uh, I have the 2.0 card, so I'm going to go with that. And then we want to take this folder and drag it over here. Or you can also just go to open folder there and browse for it. But that's going to bring everything we need in. All right. And then we want to go to Marlin and then configuration.h. 
So there's a couple things we want to change. Um, first one being uh, the custom name or the machine name. I like to change this um, just so I know uh, what I'm working with. So I'm just going to do Ender 3 Pro 0920 uh, just so I know when I compiled this. So that's what's going to show up at the bottom of the display on the printer itself. Again, this step right here is completely optional. You could just leave it with what it had and it would work. Um, the next couple things I'm going to go through are specific to the BL Touch. So if you don't have a BL Touch and you're wanting to change it for other purposes, you can go through and make your changes and then just skip ahead to when I compile it. Uh, if you are running a BL Touch, you might want to uh, take a look at what I'm doing and set these values. All right, so the first thing we want to set is uh, the Z min probe and stop inverting. It's set to false by default. We need to change it to true. Then we want to go and make sure that a couple things are enabled. Uh, so the first one is going to be uh, line 850 here. The lines might vary based on when you grab the firmware, but it should be right around that spot. Um, it should be this one should be enabled by default, but just in case it's not, you want to make sure that it is enabled. Uh, next one is going to be uh, actually enabling the BL Touch. So here at line 909, we just want to uncomment this. It's going to say basically that we are we have the BL Touch and that we want to enable it in the firmware. And then we need to go down a little bit lower and set our offsets. I have videos going over how to do this uh, that I can link to in the description below. Uh, but my, the offset that I have right now is negative 47 and negative 8. So we're just going to go ahead and set those. All right, next we want to make sure that enable leveling fade height is enabled. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for that. It is right here at uh, 1265 and it is enabled, so we're fine there. And then if you want it to change uh, your grid, uh, you can do that here at 1291. So right now it's set to three. So that's going to be a three by three grid, which means you're going to have nine pro points. Uh, you want to make sure that if you do change it, that you keep it at an odd number so that the center is being probed. And you also want to make sure that um, you don't go too high because it does add time to the prep before it starts printing. So if you were to do uh, 5 by 5 you're going to have 25 pro points, uh, 7 by 7 be 49 and so forth. So that takes a lot of time and you're not going to get too much more return, if any, from the 3 by 3 So I'm keeping it at 3, but if you wanted to change that, that's where you would do it. All right, next thing we want to do is uncomment out the Z-Safe homing. Uh, you want to do that if you are running the uh, BL Touch or any auto leveling. Uh, so by default, it is commented. So we just want to go to that and remove it. Uh, now we want to go back and tell it what type of leveling to do. So we're going to search for auto bed leveling. And it should give you uh, like four selections or five selections here. Uh, we're going to do bilinear. So we'll just uncomment that. Uh, if you guys are interested in doing a different type of auto bed leveling, uh, let me know. I can try to go into it a little bit more. But this one is the standard. All right, now we want to comment out um, min software and stop Z. So I'm just going to search for that really quick. And it's enabled by default, but we want to comment it. So we'll just put two forward slashes there, and uh, that will comment it out for us. If you're running the BL Touch 3.0 or higher, there's a couple settings under configuration underscore advanced dot H that they recommend changing. Uh, it's going to be line 661 and 669. So basically with a lot of our printers, we have a lot of the uh, boards and wires exposed. So this is supposed to help make it more reliable. Um, there are people saying that it's questionable if it makes a difference or not, um, but it's just two lines. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment it just because it is recommended. Uh, you don't have to if you don't feel it's needed, but that's just something I want to do. All right, so that's the changes that I wanted to make. 
Um, now we need to compile the firmware and go ahead and put it on the SD card. All right, so first we just want to go down and hit this little checkbox. It's the platform IL build command, and it will go through and start compiling all the firmware for you. It's going to pull down a lot of binaries and everything else it needs to compile. Uh, I did want to make a note that I had an issue here the first time that I went through when I was modifying some files out of band and it gave me some weird errors. I searched the errors. It said to uh, go to a different version of the firmware, um, but that ended up not being needed. I just pulled down another copy of the same version and uh, it worked just fine. So if you do run into any errors, the first thing I'd recommend is pulling down the firmware again and um, just making the changes. All right, so you can see here that we successfully built it. Uh, so now we just need to grab that uh, firmware file and drop it on the SD card. So I'm going to go back to the folder that we had open. Uh, we're going to drill into that. We're going to go to this .pio folder, which is just the platform IO output. Then we're going to go into builds, and then you should have a a folder here that matches the name of your printer it would have just been created so um, if you don't have anything here uh, there's an issue with the build but you should have a folder here so we're going to go into that and then we want this firmware.bin file so I've got my SD card open over here so I'm going to go ahead and just copy this onto the SD card and eject it And we're going to uh, go back over to the printer and um, go ahead and insert the card, reboot, and it's going to pull the firmware down. So I'll show you how to walk through that process again. But, I mean, that's really the process. Uh, it's not that difficult. Now, if you are making other tweaks and stuff, you might be doing a lot of back and forth. So uh, it might make sense to have the printer by you just so you're not walking across the room like I am every time I wanted to make a tweak. Um, you could also connect the printer directly to this, but that's not something I wanted to do. I prefer to just use the SD card and drop the bin on it uh, just because it's easy and if there's any issues, um, you won't have to worry about it messing up the printer. All right, so let's go back over to the printer and wrap this up. All right, guys, I have the firmware on the SD card. Now it's time for the easy part. We just enter in the printer and go ahead and power it on. You're gonna see the screen uh, go blue for about 15 seconds or so, then it's gonna boot into the new firmware. Uh, as you can see, it's booting up the firmware now, so it's actually pretty quick. And now your new firmware is on the printer, so that part was simple. Uh, next step is gonna be uh, making sure you set your Z probe offsets correctly. I did a video on that before, I'll link to it in the description below. Uh, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do that so that you're getting the right layer, of, sorry, the nozzles the right height from the bed. All right guys, so that's all there was to it. Uh, like I said at the beginning, it's not that difficult. Uh, you just had to download a couple things and then uh, walk through the process. Uh, once you've done it once, uh, doing it again is really simple. So if you ever need to just make a tweak or something to the firmware, uh, just go into VS Code, make that tweak, compile it, drop it on the SD card, enter in the printer. It, uh, the printer is going to pull the file and you're good to go. Um, that's really all there is to it. But if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you and help you out as much as I can. But that's all I got for today. So talk to you next time. Thanks.